here with 8 Power and uh, who are you? Uh, my name is Paul Egan and I'm VP of Business Development for 8 Power. And uh, what are you showing here? What is this? So today we are launching our self-powered GPS tracker. So we are using vibration energy harvesting and a mixture of solar to be able to run a sensor network with enough power to run GPS as well as wide area communications over the new low um, power wide area networks. So this is energy harvesting 100%? Yep, so this is completely um, self-sufficient when it comes to energy. We use vibration from the environment such as when attached to a truck or a piece of rotating machinery uh, or maybe on a rail freight car. Uh, that generates some of the power, but obviously we can supplement that with uh, high efficiency solar cells as well. And uh, uh, your company, have you been doing this for a while or what do you, uh, what do you talk about in your, uh, right here, sorry, let me jump in. Uh, what is this about on the bridge? So this is a, uh, so this is a case study of a self-powered sensor that we, ran, that we ran on the fourth road bridge in Scotland in 2015. So this was to prove the concept that just by attaching one of our devices to uh, a vibrating structure, it meant that we could actually generate enough power to run a sensor system and run the wireless. So this is real? This is real, yeah. Uh, you're actually out there in the yep. market? Yep, these are, these are real products. Uh, the, this pro the first prototype devices are going to be sold um, at the end of June with production in the fourth quarter this year. So how much of the power comes from vibration? How much from the solar? Most of it's actually, for the applications we've seen so far, most of it's actually coming from vibration. And um, is this size like this? It's called a Track, Track 100 SA? Yep. It's using LoRa One. Yep. We're using LoRa One for this particular one because we have a LoRa network with us in Berlin today, but we do support all the other low power wide area standards such as LTE, CAT M1, and narrowband IoT. So, um, uh, potentially you would want to have millions of these everywhere, or what's, what's going to happen in the future? Yeah, ideally. So for us, the business model is sensing as a service. So rather than just being a straight hardware play, we would see being able to provide services over a number of years to assets, particularly the kinds of assets where you would install the device and then never have to go back and uh, change the batteries or recharge the device. Are you planning to do smaller ones? You yep, have smaller yep. ones? We, we have, uh, this is our launch, the first launch product. We are planning on a range of uh, other devices with, up, with different power outputs, different sensors, and with different wireless systems. So on the bridge, is uh, the cars that go on the bridge to make it a wood? Yep. It was just literally the, uh, the bridge itself resonates and we attached one of our harvesters to the one of the parts that uh, vibrates and that was enough to provide the power to run the wireless and the sensor.